Hey friends, welcome to episode 23. This is our second episode this week and part of a series I'm offering in response to the crisis happening around the world. I hope that these episodes encourage you and offer you support wherever you are. In this episode, I'm going to share the methods I've used to create a home base for my family that also creates a sense of stability and security while allowing us to live out our unique purpose. This is the Streamlined Motherhood Podcast. I'm Kate Saffel, Certified Simplicity Parenting Family Life Coach and Mom of Three. I'm here to guide you back to your intuition, to help you overcome daily overwhelm, and to start feeling confident in the mama and woman you are. Each episode, I'll share tips and encouragement for thriving on your motherhood journey, because this life you're living is way too important to put on autopilot. So I just have to preface this episode with what real life is looking like for me right now. My husband is home from work. Uh, My kids are here. It's kind of chaotic. And if you hear like kids running around or door slamming, this is just real life. But I wanted to make sure that I got this episode to you. And so I figured imperfect is better than not done at all. So mamas, right now we have an opportunity to re-envision the way we see and create our homes. Many of us are spending more time at home or are completely home all the time as we adjust to life during this coronavirus quarantine. So what I'm going to share in this episode is just as important at any point in which you listen to this episode, and here's why. We as moms, whether we work full-time outside the home, in the home, or are stay-at-home moms, Whether we have a partner or are the full provider for our kiddos, we are the ones creating the way our homes function and feel. We decide how we want to use our homes, the routines and rituals that take place in it, even what throw pillows to put on the couch. We wipe the counters, tuck away stray toys, and snuggle our kids in our beds as we read aloud. I've always believed that home is wherever family is together, and it's not dependent on a physical place. And I still believe that to be true. And so in this episode, I will provide you with ways to reimagine the physical aspects of your home as well as the heart or the spirit of your home. The reason why this is so important right now is that many of us are feeling scared. Our kids are scared and confused about what's going on. And since we can't predict the future and none of us have lived through this particular scenario before, there is a lot of uncertainty and unease. It's up to us as the moms to step into our bravery, which, hint, by the way, was episode 22, and then create a safe space for our families to continue thriving no matter what's happening in the world. We have the power to do that. So whether you live in a mansion or a school bus, this episode is for you, my friend, and I have five steps for you. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in with a little reflection on what is home to you. When you were little, what did you imagine your future home would look like? Who was in your space and how did you all interact? Does your current home reflect what you envisioned all those years ago? And if it doesn't, don't get discouraged because we're going to talk about how to create the home you desire within the home you already have. For me, I have always loved homes. I wanted to be an architect at a very early age. So my brothers are significantly older than me and were out of the house by the time I was 10. So I was kind of like an only child. And my parents and I would spend weekends going to open houses for just what I thought were my dream homes. I just love to go inside and imagine what life would like be like in these beautiful big homes. I also loved reading house magazines and would spend countless hours sketching my dream home on graph paper. Yes, I was that kid. <laughs> it's amazing that I didn't become an architect, but that's, um, that is a whole nother story. And sometimes I would imagine my adult home and what it would look like to raise a family within that beautiful, spacious home. But on the flip side, I was also fascinated with RVs and tiny getaways and loved books like Little House on the Prairie and the Boxcar Children. So to say I had conflicted ideas about what home should look like is certainly true. We lived in a pretty typical middle-class 1970s yellow bi-level home with like dark brown shag carpet and, um, you know, like gold interior finishes. I mean, it was like really cool at the time, you know, and then it just looked really dated. Um, but it always felt homey to me. And it, even though it wasn't like fancy or on trend, which by the way, that phrase drives me nuts. 
It's almost hilarious to think of any of the moms of the 1980s or 90s worrying about what their homes looked like or trying to keep up with trends. We just did life in our homes and that was that. Some of my friends had fancier furniture in their homes and some didn't, and yet I don't even remember it mattering because I always felt at home in my own space. So before we get to the next step, I want to encourage you to reflect on what home meant to you as a child and what it does now. For some of you, you may not have felt safe as a child, and so it's incredibly important to you to create that safety and security for your kids now. And for others of you, maybe you had every need met, but you didn't feel love within the walls of your home. If you need to stop this episode to do some quick journaling, I highly recommend it. Just don't forget to come back. And now that you've gotten the big picture of what home means to you and a vision for the home you want for your family, I want you to imagine three feelings you want your family to always feel in your home. The feelings you choose may be totally different from your neighbors, and that's okay. We make our homes unique by investing our heart and feelings into the space. So I actually had to spend some time myself reflecting on what my three feelings are that I want my space to feel like. And the ones I came up with are loving, calm or peaceful, and welcoming. Once you have your three feelings, I want you to then reflect on why you chose those. For me, I want love to be the foundation of all the choices we make in our home. I try to teach my kids to love on one another, their neighbors, and in their thoughts about themselves and others. It feels super hard at times, but we are all learning how to love ourselves. I also want our home to be a place of calm and peacefulness where they feel like they can get away from the chaos, the violence, the negativity, and harsh ideas of the world. Not that we're hiding from the world or avoiding it, but I want my home to be a place of peace and security. Finally, I want my children and anyone who enters my home to feel welcomed. This means our home feels like a home. There's nothing fancy or special about it, but my kiddos see pictures of our travels, beloved objects on display, and cozy blankets everywhere for snuggling up in. So hopefully you figured out your three feelings and we're going to move on to the next step. I may no longer be recording on Cohesive Home, my old minimalism and simple living podcast, but decluttering is still a tool I regularly use in my home. And the reason is this, when we declutter, we're creating space for the type of family we want to be and the home we want to create. When our homes are stuffed to the brim with memories from who we used to be or even others things that we don't want, it's like we're telling the universe we want more of someone else's life. I believe that when we're intentional with what we allow in our home and lovingly let go of what doesn't belong, we create space for what does. So although this is not a decluttering episode full of specific directions, I do want to encourage you to walk through your home with a curious mind. Ask yourself which items are holding your family back from evolving into who you want to become. How are you holding on to someone else's idea of what home is and resisting creating the home you know in your heart you want? Sometimes we mindlessly acquire clutter without much thought behind it. Bring awareness to your shopping patterns and ask yourself what buying stuff adds to your life. Does it make you feel a certain way? And if so, how can you create the feeling in a positive manner that also allows you to ditch the shopping habit? And from a like just totally practical standpoint with us needing to stay home with this quarantine, that may even help a little bit because I've noticed my expenses have completely gone down, which is really awesome. So this week I have been going through one room per day, decluttering, organizing, and deep cleaning. With three kids at home, this can take me a few hours to do just one room, but the outcome has been so worth it. There's something so satisfying in seeing empty, clean surfaces, washed floors, and every item in a room tucked in its proper place. In the Simplicity Parenting Method, Kim John Payne, the author, notes that a lot of physical clutter can be overwhelming to children. We think it's better for them to have lots of choices, but just like us trying to pick a jar of mayo at a giant grocery store, we get decision fatigue. And by the way, what is with all the different mayo choices? Seriously. (laughs) I like to treat my home like a Trader Joe's or an Aldi's if you're familiar with one of those. You know, there's very few options uh, and everything's simplified. So in your home, you can do the same thing, have just a few options, and that's it. Your kids will benefit from it. Simplify your home and see how it creates an added layer of simplicity and peace for your family. The next step is one of my favorites. Make your home feel more cozy and homey so it better reflects the feelings you listed above. 
Depending on when you listen to this episode, you probably can't go out and buy new things to decorate your home. And honestly, that makes me so happy because it requires that we be creative and shop our home for new ways of using what we already own. Can you imagine our great-grandmothers that lived during the Great Depression hopping over to Target every time they thought about making their home more cozy? No, they made do with what they had or they did without. Just between you and me, I have a bunch of unpacked boxes in my garage from when we emptied our storage unit after traveling, and there are paintings and decorative objects, photo albums, even furniture. That's embarrassing, right? But the good news is that I can rearrange my furniture and change out the blankets, pillows, artwork, and whatnot to make our home feel fresh and reflect the values that I want it to represent. You could even get really daring and use this time stuck at home to switch the function of bedrooms. A few months ago, I read a home design book about feng shui, and it was so eye-opening. Whether or not you believe in that stuff, I realized it would be better for my home office to be in a different bedroom, and so my husband and I switched rooms to make that happen. Oddly enough, once we did that, I saw a big leap of growth in my business. Could it be a placebo effect? I mean, if that's even possible with bedrooms. But either way, what do you have to lose besides some time and some sweat equity? I'm going to link to that book in the show notes if that's your jam. But seriously, just have fun with your home. It's a box that you live in and you get to choose how you use every single room within it. Okay, so you've taken steps to make your home more cozy. Now I want you to consider your current routines and any rituals that are important to you. Again, in the Simplicity Parenting Method, we use daily rhythms or rituals to create security for our kiddos. But honestly, it's also for us. If you're currently living without a good solid rhythm to your days, my guess is you feel a bit chaotic and overwhelmed. No need to guilt yourself or feel ashamed that it is the way it is. We can work on that together, my friend. My guess is that I need to do an entire episode on rhythms and rituals for families, but for now, let's start with a very basic introduction. A rhythm is a loose way of imagining the big chunks of time throughout your day. These rhythms don't have to be the same every day, depending on your work and the kids' school schedules, but having one for each day provides a framework to keep your day on the rails. I highly recommend keeping your morning and evening and bedtime routines consistent as much as possible, particularly if you have littles under six. They especially need the consistency, but let's be honest, even we adults do. Sometimes it's helpful to make a list of the major goals of each day and not the tasks. What I mean by this is, for example, if you're a stay-at-home homeschooling mom, you would have your morning routine for yourself, then a morning routine for the kids. Then after that time block, you might have a three-hour homeschooling block followed by a lunch and play block, maybe a little outdoor time, and then maybe your afternoon block is reading aloud and playing quietly. Then you would have your evening block that would include dinner prep, eating dinner, and cleaning up before bed. Finally, you would have your bedtime block that would include... Bedtime stories, maybe prayers or setting intentions, a bedtime song or meditation, and then lights out. Then you might have one final block for you that includes a quick setting up the home for the next day, maybe some reading for your own enjoyment, and then you settling down for bed. Can you feel the difference of that versus a giant to-do list of a hundred things that you have to do every single day that you just can't, right? And we set ourselves up for failure when we do that. And so that's where the time blocks can just be such a great shift. We create containers or blocks of time to then hold the things that have to be done. Focus your attention on the major blocks and see how your day shift. I also recommend creating some special family rituals, which feels especially important and grounding during this time of uncertainty in our world. Rituals are any small gesture of connecting as a family in a way that feels special and different from the rest of the day. For my family, this means prayers and intention at mealtime, as well as saying what we're grateful for. We also love lighting a beeswax candle at bedtime and saying what was the best part of our day. Rituals are as unique as your family, so have fun thinking of special and simple ways to connect. Finally, at this time in which the world seems to be falling apart, everyone is full of fear, anxiety, and uncertainty, I want to encourage you to just let go of as much as you possibly can. The best thing you can do for yourself and your family is to be fully present, to find your gratitude for being in the situation that you're in, and make the most of what you do have. We cannot control the world, but we can control what's happening within our four walls. That's where you're in charge, Mama, so make the most of what you can. 
Okay, friends, hang in there and reach out anytime for additional support. I think you know how to reach me. I will be back tomorrow with one more episode this week, and I'm so excited to share it with you. I will see you then. Hey mamas, if you enjoyed this episode, did you know that coaching with me one-on-one is the fastest and the best way to implement all of these ideas? I teach my clients exactly how to stop daily overwhelm, to overcome negativity and that feeling that you're never enough. You know what I'm talking about, right? And we do this so that you can confidently become the mama and woman you've always dreamed of being. There's no shame in getting help. We all need a helping hand. So head to the streamlinedlife.com forward slash life coaching with Kate Saffel. That's S A F F L E to sign up for a free 50 minute consult with me. And together we'll get clear on all of your struggles and a roadmap for how to overcome them. You and I together, we've got this. Mm-hmm.